and two, it's Felger and Mez. Makes him feel good. On 98.5, the Sports Hub. It's the Blue Man Group. Without the visual delights, I would find it hard to believe. It is uh, 98.5, the Sports Hub. We are touching rich 70 degrees at uh, 9.03. Louis C.K., very famous uh, comedian. Uh, the writer, director, editor, everything for the show. Louis, uh, favorite of uh, many people. He will be per- appearing August 4th, uh, tomorrow at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom in Hampton, New Hampshire. He will then be appearing on Friday at the South Shore Music Circus in Cohasset. Uh, and then the following day, Newport Yachting Center in Newport, Rhode Island. And uh, ending all of it up at the Cape Cod Melody Tent in Hyannis on August 7th. Uh, that is a, a big round of New England shows. He is from the area. Mr. Louis C.K., thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, uh, you've, uh, you probably don't remember, but you've done the show before. And, sure. And one of the last times that you were on, you you made the statement, you go, I don't know why when I'm on with you, I, I'm so hateful towards you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember that. Yeah. yeah, you're just full of hate. <laughs> and, and you said it like you stepped outside yourself for a second and said, whoa, yeah. Louis well, C.K. you've got to be able to do that. Yeah, you, you almost realized just how, how brutal and cruel you are. Yeah. It, it didn't change your behavior, I guess, but... Uh, no, it, but also it might have been you guys. You might. I think you guys take people to a place outside of themselves. Yeah, well, you know, it's all, it's, it's, it depends what kind of mood. It gets very metaphysical at times in here. It's, we, can, we can take you on a trip. Don't worry about it. Metaphysical. Okay. That's right. Uh, now, the show Louie, uh, you uh, write, direct, you, you control everything with that thing, right? Well, I don't control anything. I'm in charge of a lot, but you don't get it's too hard to control it. If you think you can control it, you you'll really kill yourself. But now, but you but you even down to like editing the show, you have final say with everything. It is truly your voice being heard. Yes, I write it, I direct it, and I edit it. That's right. Yeah. And you have an interesting thing with the recurring characters on that show, meaning that they're not necessarily going to be recurring. That that uh, people just kind of pop in and out of the show. Yeah, I tend to get rid of people if I'm sick of them or uh, suddenly invent them, even though they didn't exist before. If I feel like it, it's um, yeah. It's to me that's the funnest way to do it. So. And why waste time writing them out of the show? Yeah, what is the point of that? I mean, nobody wants to watch that. It makes it, when TV shows do that, like it makes them feel good, like they did their job. But the audience has to sit through that crap. It's boring. Well, you, yeah, and it's a little egotistical too because you feel that people are so and involved. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They're they're watching a a, a cat chase a fish on uh, YouTube while they're watching your show. Nobody's paying that close attention. People are multitasking. That's yeah. right. And now, on your show, it's, it's basically loosely based, or I, however loosely, but it's based on, on your actual life, your actual existence. Well, not. I mean, it, it's me, like it's my stupid face and it's my voice, and uh, and I have the same trappings as a lot of my life, but none of the things that happen in the show have really happened. Oh, okay, but you have two daughters in real life, and, yes. you're, and you're divorced from your wife in real life, and, yes. and, and dealing with all that stuff. Yes. It, it is. It, it, She's not my wife anymore. That's why we got divorced. You don't get, you don't, like, you don't stay divorced to your wife. It's just you're divorced. Okay, so the, not my wife. the woman you were formerly married to is no longer uh, living with you. That's right. <laughs> this is, I guess, the way I could put it. Uh, Are you so, married? Uh, yes. You have, like, some fear of divorce. Like, you, you're afraid your wife's going to say it something if you say that the wrong way, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I, now that I have kids, I am afraid of divorce. Yeah. I, I, it, it, it drives me crazy. I hear other people when they're, you know... Their wives remarry, and then and, and then there's another guy, you know, disciplining the children and things. That that would trouble me a great deal. Mm. And not so much even my wife. My wife, uh, I could give or take, but now that there's children involved, <laughs> you know, now now that would raise the stakes. You know, you'd be surprised. You don't think you have any, um, you, you know, fathers kind of are made. You, you, you're made to feel useless, um, usually by the mom. Um, <laughs> but uh, so what happens is you feel like if I get if there's a divorce, I'm not going to be part of this family anymore. Like, I'm not going to be a dad anymore. But it's not true. If you actually, if you try, you can do it. You can, I'm not trying to talk you into getting divorced. I don't know what's going on in your house, but. Uh, no, it's, but it's, you it's, got it's, strange men tainting that uh, fatherhood. No, but, but Louis, yeah. you do take a very hands-on approach with with your children. I mean, it's evident on the show and in in, in from your comedy 
Uh, yeah, my kids are with me half of the week, and uh, I, to me, it was important that I raise them, not visit with them. So they're they're very much uh, yeah, it's, they're my responsibility. And you pull a lot of your material from, uh, and, and, I, and that's why you know you're so relatable to people. Is that uh, you know you're very honest about your relation with your children and, and the foibles and the good things that can come from that. And uh, how old are your kids right now? My kids are six and nine. Six and nine. And uh, I, me and Rich, have, we have kids that are uh, both, we both have kids, uh, two kids, uh, three and uh, one, both of the, the children. And uh, six and nine, is there a, is that a big difference in terms of... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, one is just, you're just keeping it from, uh, keeping it clean and, and not dead. That's pretty much all you're doing with a one-year-old. Right. And a uh, three-year-old is, is just a pure id want machine. It's just a thing that it's discovered that there's things beyond uh, existence and survival, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it knows what things taste good, and it, and it knows how to demand. Um, so that's a tough time. But that's not, you're not far. Four-year-olds are human beings. Okay, because I'm waiting for that, because I, I tend to joke around with my son, and I'm being dead serious. I tend to joke around with my son, and I think that I've made myself kind of a punchline yeah. in that, like, uh, he knows, like, if he's, like, you know, I don't like the daddy or, like, you know, stuff yeah. like that, he will get a reaction. Like, uh, and, and right. so it's come to a point, though, that sometimes it, like, hurts my feelings. Well, like, it's, yeah, you, <laughs> you know, started like, that, man. Huh? You started it. Yeah, I don't, I know, but it wasn't intentional. I thought I was being, yeah. you know, like a... You know, kids, well, you can, you can talk to your kids any way you want. Like, if you talk... I've always talked to my kids like they're people, like I've had long conversations with them when they were babies. If you just, you know, if you really, the kids that keep you company, they're, they're great friends. If you talk to them like you talk to your friends. But a three-year-old doesn't, it, it's very hard to have a conversation with a three-year-old. Well, you can do it if you really, you got to spend time alone with your kids. I do, I do. I spend a lot of time. I'm home all day and, I, and my wife goes out and I, I spend time alone with them. And believe me, he does the thing, let's talk, let's talk. Yeah, it's me and my son on the television. Yeah, and, well, no, I, I talk to him. I do, I do. I would love to have a conversation with him. But does he very watch different. TV? Uh, he watches like an hour or two, an hour and a half a day. That's not bad. No, 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 no. I, I, well, I, he'll develop into something. He'll be a person soon. Don't worry. All right. Yeah, four is a big year. Okay. Before they kind of calm down, they actually start looking at you like, hey, dude, I don't know what that was up with me back then. All right. So they, they, there, is a, there is a sense of that they're, they're apologetic for uh, all of what they put you through before. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you pro-lying to your kid, like, when it's an awkward question? Because, you know, we, we've talked about that before, like parents yep. who complain about the, uh, what am I going to say to my kids about that billboard for the strip club? You know, when they ask me what it is, you know, do you just, are you 100% honest and just tell them and, and let them deal with it? Or do you make up some lie? Um, you know, you can come up with things to say to kids that, you know, when they're ready to. I don't think lying is a good idea because then you're living a constant cycle of lying and then breaking the lot, you know, telling them that you lied later, you know. Do you um, think they'll remember? I mean, if kids find stuff out, they find stuff out in some kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Johnny at school told me that someday I'm going to die. You don't tell them, well, you're, it's never going to happen. Right. Yeah. It's never going to happen. Rest assured, <laughs> you're going to live forever. Right. Well, See, well, what about all the people that have died? They're just all but except you. Right. You're Jesus. You're Jesus. Well, it's, it's, and then, yeah. And then they find, then later they go, uh, you, well, what if, how come you said if I smoke cigarettes, they'll kill me if I'm not going to? Oh, well, I was lying. You are going to, you're definitely going to die. Right. Well, isn't there a certain purity to be unaware of one's uh, intimate dem or uh, inevitable demise? Yeah, but it's not a, it's not a real, I mean, you don't have to go tell your kid today. I'm just saying. <laughs> just to make it very clear. How about change the subject? Yeah, no, no, perhaps you step on a thing like uh, you don't have to worry about that right now. And kids will actually listen if you say that. Okay. You know, you don't have to. That's not something you have to worry about right now. Well, you know, your friend shouldn't talk about that. It's not a kind of thing you talk about with a kid your age. I mean, I actually can tell, tell kids that. Right. Like, I'm not going to, you know, we're not going to discuss this now because it's not appropriate for your age. You're going to someday know, know everything. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you when you need to know it. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about that. How how much do you the censor? Bill, the billboard, you know, what what is a three-year-old's, what is the need-to-know basis? 
Right. The three-year-old boy, I better tell him about the strip club so he doesn't get ripped off when he goes next week. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. You know, you don't have to really. Yeah, there, you, have a little, you have a little time to uh, explain yeah, the do's and don'ts. That's a place where grown-ups uh, go and they do stuff that grown-ups do, and it's, and it's really depressing. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> and the no chicken one wings, happy. The chicken wings are overpriced, <laughs> and the premise of the relationship between the two people is the saddest thing in the world. <laughs> and the older you get, the sadder it gets, absolutely. Yeah. Because there's not even... A, 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 a possibility that they would be interested in you, at least when you're in your early 20s or the same yeah. age. I think you can tell them a realistic version of things, the way things really feel. I mean, I think a lot of times we sanitize stuff for kids in a way that's not helpful um, to them, like telling them that, you know, not to have premarital sex because it's wrong and evil and they'll get a disease. And You can really just tell them that they'll feel like crap afterwards. You're going to feel bad and you're going to be embarrassed that you're naked in front of a stranger. <laughs> you get to know somebody first before you uncover your genitalia, because otherwise you're going to feel dumb. <laughs> now, at what age are you going to have that talk with your kids? You brought, you have, right? At nine? No, because they don't ask those questions. Oh. I mean, they've asked me. They've asked me what, how babies are made, and what goes on. I have said something about sex to my uh, six and nine year olds. Yeah, um, I'm, I told them basically what happens, and you know very simply, but I said to them, the only thing I said to them that was sort of in a grown-up context is, you never do this thing unless you really want to. If anybody tells you that you have to or you should do it, they're they're wrong. They're absolutely wrong. The only reason this should ever happen is because it's something that you really want. Well, there you go, Louis C.K. That's the only thing I've imprinted on them at this age without telling them. Uh, listen, it's much. it's good advice, my friend. Good advice. And uh, you can see Louis C.K. live uh, August 4th, Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom in Hampton, New Hampshire, the 5th South Shore Music Circus in Cohasset, August 6th, Newport Yachting Center in Newport, Rhode Island, August 7th, Cape Cod Melody Tent in Hyannis. You can get tickets at Ticketmaster.com. Sir, enjoy your time uh, back home in the New England area, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. I didn't hate you this time. This yeah, you, right. didn't, you didn't even have to step outside yourself. No, uh, this is all right. You guys are growing up. This is good. The kids are doing a good thing for you guys. Yeah, they're, they're mellowing us out. They're making yeah. us uh, really boring is what they're doing. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, Louis C.K., thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. There you go. Louis C.K. All right.